Jason Allred, let's start really quick. Tell everybody how much you are doing per month as of today. So I'm doing 13.8K today. Beautiful. Uh, assuming I close that other deal, which can't count the chickens before they hatch. So 13.8K today. Should be at 14.8K, but, you know. Is that the deal that we're talking about that they, they ghosted you? Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. that one I assumed was closed for some reason. But yeah, unless you get a payment, don't assume it's closed. <laughs> that is so true. You have no idea how true that is. So 13.8K. Um, when did you start? Just to give everyone a little bit of context. I, I bought into your program December or November of last year. But, and then you, know, you said you, that you really started, like actually properly started in January. Like you, you like actually got into this in January. Yeah. That's when I really like got my shit together. And I was like, dude, you have to go all in this. Like, there's no reason why you should be chasing this SEO deals. So I just wow. went, that's right. I just went all in, in January and yeah, that's when I really started getting this thing going. So before that, when you were, you, I remember that you were actually, you were doing a little bit of SEO. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And that's natural. What, what were you doing before? And are you still doing it? I was doing SEO, but I was only no. doing SEO for before oh. SEO. You were doing SEO before you even joined. Yeah. I was doing SEO for about probably five or six months before I joined your program. Oh, okay. Okay. That's exactly yeah. what happened to me. Um, and sometimes guys, it's okay. Sometimes you got to pay the bills. We understand that. Um, but you got to be careful that you do, you don't get stuck, sucked down the, the wormhole of SEO. Um, what did you think, like to you, what was the hardest, not the hardest, but what was the biggest or the, the biggest challenge with running SEO company? Oh, dude, there's, there's so many. Um, so first of all, I, I had quite a few female business owners and I'm not, I'm not trying to like discriminate at all, but they literally wanted me to change the look of their website almost every other day. I was spending more time at the desk trying to make these business owners happy with just the looks of their website, not even getting them results um, than I was spending at my nine to five job before I quit. So I felt like I kind of just had this dream of walking away from the nine to five, but I walked straight into this other prison cell basically. And it just wasn't working out for me. Yeah. <laughs> SEO is a tricky thing, dude. It happened to me. Um, there's nothing wrong with SEO. There's nothing wrong with using SEO to quit your job. But like for me, it, it was a prison cell because I never felt confident that the money was going to be there. Yeah. And we made this hilarious, well, not we, Isaac did. Um, he made this hilarious like meme of like, <laughs> I think it's it's Owen, not Owen Wilson, it's Tom Hanks or whatever. It's like when you're at SeaWorld and your $4,000 a month client quits. And I was literally at SeaWorld at, on like a vacation and we were making around eight to nine top line. One of my clients was $4,000 a month. And that person called me in the middle of SeaWorld. And I just knew when I saw the phone ring that I was toast. And man, what a what a bad experience when you're about to go on a vacation paid for by the client and they're telling you they're done. So that was when I was like, I have to get out of this. That was that was uh, mid summer 2019. And that's if you guys put the timeline together, it was the end of 2019 when I really like almost quit doing this business, which is funny because I really didn't even give this a proper chance. But anyway, no, long story short, um, um yeah. And then tell us really quick, like, what are some of the niches you're in? You don't have to tell us everything, but what are some of the different niches that you're in? I just listened to your advice and went straight into the tried and true. I'm still doing that. Uh, most of my deals are in concrete. Some of my deals are in tree service. The one I closed on Sunday is, is in tree service. Uh, I got a few niches that, uh, that I feel like have potential that I haven't shared with people, but you know, that's for, for another conversation. <laughs> if I get 200,000 K I'll share it with you guys. <laughs> so, you know, what's funny is, um, and Aaron can tell you guys, this is true. Well, first of all, 
We just got um, Francesca, you guys probably saw the post, just got a $1,700 a month deal in artificial grass. This was on, uh, this is yesterday, actually. And uh, she might have got it on, was it yesterday or Sunday? Anyway, so that's artificial grass. That's a tried and true niche. And then um, she just found a, a really good area for concrete. And um, Aaron, you can even tell everyone I'm not lying here. When I heard the name of the city, which <laughs> you're not, you're not going to say, you better not say, I told, I said, no, I don't believe it. You remember? I said this is yesterday. I was like, no, we're Better not doing it. Pull up some rush. Yeah. I, he, he, I was like, no, we're not doing There's no way that area is open for concrete. And uh, because the city is really well known. And he's like, no, I've even looked at it myself. And she started reading me the CPC. And she's like, I didn't believe it either. So for those of you that are just like, oh, my gosh, concrete's done or artificial grass done or fencing's done. Okay. Keep complaining. So um, that's one of the questions I am going to actually, I'm going to jump to that one because it's crazy that you, we can have the same training. Jason has the same training um, as everybody else. He has the same coaching calls that he gets on and out of these. He has the same Facebook community. And for some reason, Jason's at $13,800 per month. And there's people that are at zero that are sending me messages and Aaron knows this because he works with me directly. There's people sending me messages that probably aren't on this call because they're probably busy thinking of excuses, but they're they're just blaming me, the training, the world, the recession, the 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 the, the, the rocks and the universe, and they they aren't making any money. So I guess I'm gonna jump towards near the end of one of the questions I was gonna ask you, which is um, like, why do you, what, what, why do you think you're having success or let me ask this one. Why aren't people having success that you are the same success that you are? Uh, that's a good question. I, I think there's a lot of people who are doing a lot better than I'm doing. I mean, wasn't there people, Easton I'm and... sure, uh, Yeah. But I'm saying for everyone else, and I appreciate your humility, but, and there are people that are crushing it, but you've also just kind of started. Right. Why, why, why are there some people that are at zero right now or that are like, it's the most hardest thing to comprehend how to get a deal. Like why? It's the same there, thing. I can't yeah. get it figured out. Yeah. I, I, I understand that question. Uh, they're just not taking imperfect action. You, you have to take the action. If you're not going to pick up the phone and call a business owner and at least learn off of that call from the very get go, you're not going to go anywhere. And Nick told us from the very beginning, follow his step-by-step -step process and you will close deals. So what I did is I went, I created my Google ads, I generated leads. Next thing I needed to do is, okay, now I need to go and learn how to hook a business owner. And I literally just followed your steps, Nick. Next thing I knew, I was on a closing call with a business owner. Just that imperfect action, in my opinion. What do you think, Aaron? I mean, agreed. Like you talked about it before, you have the end goal. You just got to do steps that lead up to it. I mean, that's it. It, it is an equation. I I agree. I mean, I agree. That's that's definitely that's a hundred percent a part of it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but it's it it is bonkers from my perspective. As somebody, and I remember, guys, I hope you know, I remember being the person that was at zero watching other people make money. And when I'm not making money, instead of just owning it, it's so easy as a human to make excuses and to try to blame everybody else and go, well, yeah, but those people don't have full time door knocking jobs. Those people don't have kids. Those people, this, those people, that. And then all of a sudden, you want to start like just just pretending it doesn't work and you look for excuses for why it doesn't work instead of just thinking maybe I'm the freaking problem and then finally you hit this point for those of us that are finally pull our heads out is for me I remember seeing people post deals and I would get so pissed off and not in a jealous way finally I was just like I would I would see a deal and then I would click on the profile and I was like dude I know I'm more talented than that person. Like I can just tell. 
<laughs> and I was like, I, if that person can do it, then I, and I hope you guys, when you see me, the fact that I'm just, I, I really, really, really am a very average person. It should inspire you that anybody can do this. Um, because if you knew me, if you knew where I came from, if you knew the school I went to, if you knew my testing scores, dude, I'm not Mr. Like super smart. I think I'm just Mr. Persistent. And that's the truth. So I do agree though. Imperfect action. Um, those of us that are willing to be, to look stupid. I heard Jesse Itzler say this on like a short the other day. It's like the, the, the moment that you give yourself permission to feel stupid, is the most is the most freeing thing ever. And the problem is some of you guys want to look so cool and so tough. And it's like, dude, just pick up the phone. Everyone's going to say some stupid stuff. I've said things on calls that I'm like, oh, that was bad, dude. You know, and I have, dude. So anyway, okay. That said, guys, um, Jason, why did you actually get into this industry? So what, like, what are you trying to achieve with this business model? Why did you get into rank and rent specifically? What was the thing that you're like, you know, for like, just for give you an example, for me, I wanted to be able to travel and like make his like make internet money that I wasn't tied to one location. That was the biggest thing for me. What's the reason that you got into, you know, this vehicle? Yeah, mine are pretty similar to yours, Nick. Uh, when I first branched off and just burnt the ships and started doing SEO, I me and my wife created a vision board and we had all of these things planned out. Like I promised her, I would take her to all these, these places to visit and stuff like that. And my family was like, you know, bragging about their second vacation of the year. And I hated that so much. I was like, dude, I'm not just going to save every year and try and go on one vacation once a year. That's the stupidest thing ever. So we made goals where we are going to travel whenever we want. And that's kind of what we're shooting for. But I also want to build my dream home. I want to, watch my kids take their first steps. I want to watch my kids say their first words and working a nine to five job or even just spending all day in the office isn't going to cut it for me. Yeah. I want to be able to step outside and do things on my own terms. Um, so really, it, I just want a simple life, to be honest, and get paid in my sleep. I love that. <laughs> Pretty I love simple, that. to be honest. I love that, dude. Um, it's kind of like was I just listening to? I can't remember. I heard something similar, but like, as you were saying that, I was thinking like, instead of, instead of just living a life where you're just living for your next vacation, like I don't, this, this probably sounds cheesy, but like you can actually make your life a vacation in the sense that like you every day. And I kind of feel like I'm not completely there, but I'm close because um, I have done, I have been so many places this year and I've, I mean, it's business as usual. Like I do do a little bit of work. You guys have seen me do zoom calls from all over the world, but like I've been, I've been to London twice. I've been to Paris fashion week. I've been to Dubai. I just was in Miami. I've been to LA. I've been to San Diego. I've been to Africa. I'm going to Dubai again. I'm going to Daffer. I mean, and always just business as usual. It's just because I want to, and I can, and why not? So, um, but here's the cool part, guys, is like, you don't have to want to travel. Some of you guys don't want to travel, and that's completely cool, too. Some of you guys want to sit at home and mow your lawn and put, you know, garden gnomes in your front yard and, uh, you know, drink sweet tea and all that stuff. And that is a cool life as well. But uh, you get to design it how you want to design it. So I was just curious for you what what it was. So that's awesome, dude. Um, by the way, I'm curious. Did you grow up like that? Um, or was it like you grew up dad nine to five and that's why you feel like maybe that's why you want it? It's because it's not what you had or it is what you had and you want it as well. No, really. I, I grew up. My family has worked the same job their entire life. So my dad started a cabinet company. And they all just work their same nine to five job. They they look at it as job security. And they actually, you know, were like, dude, Jason, what the heck are you doing, bro? Like you're getting scammed. You're you're paying somebody to teach you. Why not go get a college degree, if anything? You know, that that mindset that so many of the people in the country have, which is complete BS in my opinion. Uh but really it's just like I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to live a life on my own terms. 
you know, hearing people talk about, yeah, like their, their first vacation of the year and, and they're all talking about how they're looking forward to the next vacation 12 months from now. Um, just doesn't sit right with me. Like I, I want to be taking phone calls on the golf course. I actually just went and bought some golf clubs that's dope. just so I can go and, and just get into golfing because that's something I've always wanted to do, but never had time. So, uh, so yeah, just Dude, living a, <laughs> good, good for you, bro. Um, for some reason, making money on the golf course is a special money. <laughs> it's, it slaps different. My first, my very ironically, my very first <laughs> money from this business was on the golf course. I, I've shared the story. I was on this golf course. I remember everything. It was, it was, I know it was summer. Um, it was about midsummer. It was 2000 is actually early. This is, I, this is before, I think it's even, no, this is after I got sidetracked. Maybe it was before, but anyway, it wasn't much. And it was a, it was, everything was wrong. It was a paper lead deal, but I was on a, a Southgate golf course and um, I was on the second, I was on the, I was on hole 10, the back nine. I hit a really good drive, which never happens. And uh, yeah, dude, I was going uh, I think I had, I literally think I had a seven iron. I, this is how much I remember seven iron. And all of a sudden I like heard this noise on my phone or I hit, I don't know. I hit my second shot and I checked my phone and I was like, dude, I just made a hundred dollars. And it was just a hundred dollars. Right. Cause I was getting paid per phone call. And uh, um, I remember being like, dude, I've made it. And that hundred dollars was so much better than I felt, I think that hundred dollars was sweeter than the million dollars I made in 2020. It's, it's a, it's, the golf money's different, bro. So yeah, good, good choice. Good choice. I love it. Okay. Let's talk about the last deal that you closed really quick. Um, how much, what was the niche? How much, like, so how much was it for? Thousand dollars, thousand dollars per month. Thousand clean thousand uh, dollars. It's concrete. No, tree service. This one's tree oh, service. You told me that. Okay. Tree service. I was supposed to have closed two in that same night, but that one person slipped away. So, gosh dang it. There, there's still a chance, but yeah, I would just write it off mentally. Um, how much did you spend on ads to how many leads did you send them? So, these guys, I ended up sending them five total. Uh, one came through. Actually, no, it was four, four total. And on the closing call, I let them know I said, hey, one just barely came through. Assuming that we move forward together, then I'll hand it over. If not, no big deal, bro. That's a great thing to do, by the way. If you guys have a call, closing call scheduled, you feel like they've they've either closed the deal or they're interested, use that as as a carrot. Don't just go ahead and give it to them before the call. Say, hey, actually, hey, looking forward to our call. Um, we're, you're good to go, right? Yeah, okay, cool, awesome. By the way, I have this really juicy lead that came in. And once we figure something out, I'm going to hand it over to you as well. Like just that little incentive. Don't go and send it to them, you know, um, without using it as a carrot. So, um, and how much do you you sent them for or five total once you got the deal? How much did it cost you to get those five? Just over a hundred bucks. Okay. So actually, I started the campaign two weeks ago. Uh, this campaign's been killing it. Like I struck a real good area. The due diligence was awesome. Uh, I actually had four leads come in in four days. I had a business owner hooked, got him on a closing call. Uh, wasn't able to close him because I missed one of the steps, but uh, he just didn't have money, really. He really wasn't somebody who I could really work with. Anyways, a lead comes in the very next day, got another business owner hooked, and I think four leads came in the very next four days. So it, this thing moved so quick. Uh, got this guy scheduled. So probably just over 200 bucks total on this whole campaign been spent before I closed a business owner. I love it, bro. Love and, it. And, uh, even if you'd spent, you know, some people get it all. They're like, I spent 200 bucks, whatever. Even if it cost you 500, heaven forbid it cost you 500. Cause you didn't get that one. You had to do two more, three more ads weren't working guys. Even if it costs you 500 bucks, as soon as you make that first thousand dollars. And what I do is if I do, I always do weekly, but I try to on the first payment, like the very first month, I try to get the whole payment up front just to make sure like I they're good to go and they can pay a thousand bucks. You just recoup all your cost and now you made an extra 500 bucks on top of it, even if you spend $500. So don't give up on these, these deals. Sometimes it costs a little bit of money, but you recoup your cost immediately. So 
um, okay, so you spent about 200 bucks on ads. Um, and, and this campaign went quick and not all campaigns go quick guys. So don't be like, well, that'd be nice. Yeah, of course. Some, some of the other deals, you might get a lead today and it might take a week for the second one to come in. Just don't put yourself in a corner and say, Hey, I'm going to get you four leads in five days. Just say, I'm going to get you a couple of leads. It's going to take, it could take a few days, could take a, a week or two. I'm just, I want to just let you test a few of these out. I want to get you really good ones. And then we're going to talk. Is that cool? Just don't put yourself in a corner with expectations because we, we can't really control how these campaigns do. So, and then my other question was going to be how many business owners you go through. Sounds, sounds like you went through two, right? Yeah. Two total. That one. This concrete one that I just, you know, I'm still going to, I'm going to put this one on the shelf, but what I did is like, I, I kind of get pissed off when people do stuff like that, if I get ghosted or anything. So I was just like, you know what, dude, I'm going to go set up two more campaigns. So I kept that one running, went up, went and set up two more campaigns. So I got two campaigns running uh, separate from that other one, just because I was pissed. I was like, dude, I'm going to get you back. But anyways, that one, uh, that one's been running for over 30 days. I've gone through three business owners. Uh, and it's just, it's just a matter of time before I find somebody who's hungry because the the leads are coming in so somebody's going to want the lead somebody's going to want to grow oh yeah that's the that's the right mentality and that's also good that you said that because i think some people might hear your other story about tree service and think like well it always goes good for jason of course but that's not the case and it sometimes that happens and sometimes maybe out of those three people he's already been through maybe the second one he messed up and that should have been the one he got and he didn't. And now he's got to go. And I will just tell you that my mentality is that if there are leads coming through, whether it's with ad or organically, there is always, always, always a deal to be had. Do not ever give up on it. Whether we have to go into a different niche that also does that, whether we have to go into another city that covers that one, whatever the case is, if you are getting leads, there's always a deal to be had. So don't ever give up on it. Okay. Um, this is an important question I want to ask you, Jason. What, what doubts did you have coming into this business? And also, let everyone know that you had to sell your truck to get into this business. Yeah. So when I heard the price, I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> but uh, but I, 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 knew, <laughs> I knew that it was either this or go back to the 9 to 5, to be honest. Or like, cause, and I was not going back to 9 to 5. And <laughs> I, I've been in this for for long enough to realize that which just in digital marketing in general that this business model makes so much sense i was like this has to be where it's at i control the assets somebody walks away from me i maintain everything they can't just take what all this hard work that i built up and just run off with it you know what i'm saying um so the one doubt that i had when i came in wasn't necessarily the price because i knew the business model worked it was my capability of selling the deals because I'm not a salesman. I struggle communicating sometimes. And um, I was kind of doubting my capability of doing what you did because with all of your sales experience, um, but I just went in there with, with trust that you knew you were talking about and got to work. Have you noticed that we don't hardly ever have, like me and Aaron were talking about this, I would say 95% of people that come into this business, into this group, do not have sales experience. And if, have you noticed the the how few times you hear people talk about not being able to sell? Aaron, you told me, we knew and I talked about this. You remember this? Yeah. What's crazy is that like, I mean, generally speaking, you think sales is the most difficult part and it's the most important part. Part, most people struggle at but with the specific process of what we do, specifically the results in advance, it's like it's taken the skill out of sales. Obviously, the more skill that you have, the less reps it's going to take. But again, it is a formula. Like if you do 10 prospecting calls, you're probably going to get one hook. If you do three hooks, you're probably going to get one Zoom call. If you do two, three Zoom calls, maybe four, you're probably going to get a close. So, yeah. 100%. It's, uh, it's amazing because... I mean, I've been, I was in these other groups and nobody could sell. I had have somebody, somebody DM me just the other day and from another course I was part of. And they're like, yeah, I gave this business model a go. And this person literally said, um, I have no problem getting leads and ranking websites. I just can't do the sales. And I'm like, dude, that's the part in my group in digital landlords. 
everybody gets deals. And, you know, if anything, it's sometimes finding the right business owner or, you know, tweaking the ads or whatever, but like, we have no problem doing that. So anyway, it's just, it's interesting because when I started this, that was the biggest issue. And we've kind of like removed that entire obstacle. And it's not we, it's the fact that when you send results in advance, you don't have to really sell. So that's, that's the truth. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. Um, what's your why, Jason? Family, really create, creating it. You know, you only live once. So creating a life worth living for, I don't, I don't want to spend 80% of my life away from my kids. If you include sleeping and stuff like that, like I, I want to, I want to spend my time with my family and I, you know, I, I grew up with my, my dad just working all the time. Like, you, you know, he loves you, yeah. but you didn't get to see him very often because he was always working, building his business. And if I could build my business, maybe even homeschool my kids, like I, I, I would love that. that. That's something that that's a life I'm striving for just to spend time with my family, to be honest. Do, would you say you're driven by like, are you motivated to succeed or are you driven by insecurity? Oh, I'm motivated to succeed. Uh, I, I can now see that I'm capable of reaching a hundred thousand dollars a month. That's so dope, dude. Based off of what, you know, like this, I wouldn't have had this confidence if I had never joined digital networks. If I was hanging out in the free group, just leeching off of other people, trying to get information out of them, I would have never had the confidence to figure this out. But because I've practiced what you've taught me and it's proven to be true and it's I've seen the results from it, I'm already at $13,000 a month. Like, where will I be in the next 12 months? I I think I could honestly scale this to, to thirty dollars or $50,000 within the next 12 months, um, assuming I bring on the right team. But... Well, here, here's what I look at, bro, is you, you're at, let's just, I'm just going to say 14K to make easy math, but like, this is what happened with me when I got my first deal. And I, I remember getting a thousand dollars a month going, dude, I don't, I just have to do that a hundred more times, like, which is a lot, but I, I, I saw a clear path. And so like doing what you've done, it, I just took a hundred thousand divided it by 14,000. Like if you do it seven more times or six more times plus the one that you have, like you're at a hundred, you're making money that people go to school for their whole life and they don't make. And it's crazy. Like it's literally in your hands to go make a million dollars a year doing renting piece of crap websites. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it almost yeah. feels like you're, you're scamming the system, right? <laughs> I was yeah. talking to a guy the other day. He was saying how he went to school for seven years for his occupation and he's making $80,000 a year. And I'm sitting there like, Oh dude, like, honestly, I don't really do anything. Like if I think about it, like I look at this as a game, I feel like I'm playing a game all day long where like, I'm like, Oh yeah, I got a lead. Let's go. I call this business owner. And I know that I have all this value that I'm bringing to the table. And if he tells me no, I'll, I'll just give him kind of like a smart aleck response and just kind of be like, okay, that's okay, dude. Like, I'll just call up your competition and just hand it to him. It's no big deal. You know, just to let them kind of think about it on the way out. <laughs> yeah. It's true, bro. Um, yeah. It's it when you when you start to see that there is a clear path, like I think when you get to 10,000 and 15, 20, and you're like, okay, I think I could actually do this, it becomes very exciting because for some reason we always think it's for everybody else, but not for us. And I had this conversation with a friend of mine who's a real estate agent. And I think he's going to be joining this soon because he's been just kind of seeing some stuff. He sees I'm always traveling and he's like, he's big into real estate. He's in Vegas. He's been doing this for a long time. He's very serious about it. Professional. He does his stuff. He reads his books. He does. And he's like, he kind of was asking me like what, what I make and everything. And he's like, what, what? And you're in Dubai and like all the, you know, and um, yeah, dude, it's, and I told him, he's like, wait, so you made seven figures in 2020. He's like, you've made seven figures. And so I'm like, yeah, and I told him this, once you make seven figures in a year, it, it like changes your identity because you can't make a, a million dollars and go back to being less than a million. It's like, you are now 
a seven figure guy, a seven figure gal and come high hell or high water, you are going to do it. And guys, since I made that, that hundred thousand dollars a month, like that's just who we are. Like as a company, as a person, like I will never, ever, ever go below seven figures in a year. Like it just, it's just who I, what, what I am. It's like my standard has been raised. And so, um, anyway, dude, Jason, I have no doubt you're going to hit a hundred thousand per month. Um, but also I want to point out and Aaron will probably tell you the same thing is you can tell like when you could tell why Jason's successful because Jason has, he's got that energy. He's excited. Like if Jason was talking to me about leads, I would be excited to work with Jason. If Jason was talking to me as a friend about doing this business model, I would be excited about doing this business model because I can hear the excitement in his voice. And it's as a reminder, guys, sales is the transfer of energy. And some of you guys are sitting there calling and you sound like you're, you, I would rather watch paint dry on a wall than listen to your sorry ass talk about this business. And sometimes you've got to be excited. I tell Francesca this every time she gets on a phone, on a sales call because she does the sales for our agency now, which by the way, has been amazing because I don't have to do that anymore. But I'm like, Francesca, just remember, sales is the transfer of energy. And if you're excited about it, they're going to be excited about it. If you're dull about it, they're going to be dull about it. And so you guys can hear it in Jason's voice. He's so excited about it. He's It's a game. It's it's whatever. So that's huge. And um, some of you guys don't have that right now and you need to get that. So uh, Jason, for time's sake, we're going to cut it right there. I think we need to do a part okay. two. Um, I think we also should maybe bless everyone in the free group and just do a random look, go live and let people hear your story. But um, congrats on your success. I know you're just getting started. Um, not surprised at your success, but I'm also proud of you, bro. So keep it up. Thanks, man. Hey, I just wanted to ask you one question real quick. So hey, you played basketball for Para One, right? <laughs> yeah. What are you going to ask me? Bro? <laughs> yeah. Dude, so I, I played for GWAB and we played against you guys when I was in high school. I think you're a few okay. years older than me, but. Okay, go ahead. I didn't know that. You know, some other podunk high school, you know. No, dude, Nephi, he, so you're so you <laughs> go to Nephi, you're from Nephi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that school's way bigger than mine, by the way. It's like I, I'd way rather be from <laughs> Nephi. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead, go ahead, ask me. Anyways, dude, I'm like, I'm like, dude, if if Paragon's so small, I like went in and like looked up max preps, you know, like the high school, and I like found all the wood brothers. I'm like, dude, like they were like, you guys were probably the jocks back in the day, weren't you? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we had. What else do you do in Parallel? <laughs> That's just awesome. I just wanted to bring that up. But well, I'll say this by the way, because everyone will know Porter, me, Zach. Hands down, Porter was the best athlete out of all of us. So he, you guys, you guys can always bring that up. Porter can always hold that over our heads. Um, <laughs> so Porter was definitely, but also just so Porter can be humbled, he also was terrible until his he didn't tell about his junior senior year he were like dude is this kid like it's a little slow like <laughs> mentally like he was just a little bit of a late bloomer but he was really good as a senior so i was probably the worst out of all three of us so that's why i'm really trying to take this making money thing seriously and just kind of put them in their place <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding but yeah anyway so yeah just long story short Small towns, podunk towns, dude, my high school, I don't even think it's accredited. I don't think, I think if you went back to the teachers, not all of them, but there was a couple of teachers. I know they didn't have college degrees. We had teachers sneaking out in the middle of class, like pretending to go to their car. We'd catch them out smoking freaking whatever out, like not <laughs> joints, but like cigarettes and in, in the greenhouse, like teachers, uh, students, teacher relationships. I mean, dude, the weirdest stuff that was like completely normal to me, but completely inappropriate so if somebody from parowan high school like me or porter can make this work uh yeah dude you have no excuse or juap let's be honest i love oh, yeah. it yeah it is what it is anyway thanks for coming on jason we'll talk soon yeah see you guys see you